Hey, this is Brian, and can you believe it? This is the start of week 14 of the semester. This is our first day of week 14, and so we are nearing the end of the Physics 122 course, nearing the end of the semester, crazy. The good news is this is one of my favorite topics which we're gonna deal with this week, and that's the idea of lenses and images. And so we're gonna talk about using converging and diverging lenses and converging and diverging mirrors to make images. Lots of great applications here. I'm gonna start though. So when I was a kid, I, uh, but this is my mother right here. My mother was a teacher of developmentally disabled kids. She was the head teacher for a preschool of kids with various developmental disabilities. And in the summer times, when we were home from school, um, my family didn't have enough money to be able to afford childcare or something like that. So what are you going to do with the kids? And um, we weren't young enough that you could leave us on our own. So my mother asked for and got approval to basically bring us to school with her. And we served as basically her teaching assistants. And I think it was really good for the kids because they had like um, these students who ranged in age from three to eight had Bruce, Brian, and Brent able to help with them, which was kind of cool. So they had some near peer instruction. And I think it was really good for us too because it taught us to be more patient and to be more kind. And I think about of all the lessons that my mother shared with us, um, that was perhaps the most valuable to take these kids and help them see things in themselves. Like people might have told them that they weren't good enough, they weren't smart enough to be able to be interesting, creative human beings. And it was our job to help teach them that they were. And now I wanna talk about you folks because I think that you folks right now in particular, there's a fair number of you who are sort of discouraged and you're sort of sad and you're worried about your future. And a lot of you are doubting yourselves. And I see this in the tone of the communications that I get from you. And I just wanna remind you that you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. And this is a course, a quote of course from Winnie the Pooh, but I think it is absolutely applicable to you folks you are in this circumstance where maybe you're not experiencing the success that you're used to and you're starting to question yourself. Folks, it's the circumstances, it is not you. You have been in college for a long time. You've learned all kinds of amazing things. You have developed into remarkable creative human beings. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you think, stronger than you seem and smarter than you think you really are. I know you folks well and I know um, you have a tendency to underestimate yourselves. You folks are awesome and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Now let me talk about what's happening our last two weeks and I'm going to uh, mix things up a little bit from how I typically do it. This week we're going to basically finish our treatment of optics. We're going to do lenses and images parts one and two and we're going to finish by talking about the optics of the eye and that's basically the material of chapter 19 and we're going to treat that on Friday but it's really a natural extension of the lenses and images stuff which we do the two days before and that will leave us next week to basically be practice. We're going to take all the material that we've learned and think about how to put it together to solve problems. And we're going to practice our problem solving skills because fundamentally what I care about at the end of the course is that you can take everything that you've learned and you can bring those tools to bear to kind of like say things about the universe. So we're going to have a day. Concepts to applications, modeling. How do we take a physical situation and know how to get started? How do we know to apply a model to it. Next piece, we're going to say, we're going to talk about reviewing the concepts, all the concepts that you've learned. What's the big picture of all this stuff? And then finally, we're going to do some real honest to goodness practicing by looking at exam scenarios and the kinds of things that you will be seeing on your final exam. And so we're going to take a whole week to basically just look back, put those pieces together, just take a breath, step back, and look at all the stuff that we've learned and what it allows us to do. And, and I want you folks to pause and think about how much you've learned, um, how many new skills you've developed. It's phenomenal. When I look back and see how much better you folks are now at the start of the semester, it's, it's stunning. And we're going to take time to, to explore that idea and do a bit of review. And I'm going to start by kind of like jumping ahead to something we're going to talk about later in the week. So in later in the week, we're going to talk about 
vision and vision correction. And I'm going to tell the story of Piggy. And here's a picture of Piggy here from this movie version of Lord of the Flies. And maybe you had to read Lord of the Flies when you were in school and you found out that like a society composed of junior high school boys is sort of brutal. Well, that's not a surprise as someone who was a junior high school boy. But there's, uh, it's an interesting story. It's a, it's a classic. But there's a fundamental mistake in it. And I think Piggy and when I read the book, I always kind of like sympathized with Piggy because Piggy, they made fun of him because he was nearsighted and I was nearsighted and I wore glasses. And that doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you have superpowers and we will see how those of you who are nearsighted, and by the way, that is most of you in the class, which is something else I'll talk about. We have superpowers that other people can only dream of. Most of the people in the world have good eyesight. Most of the people in your class, and this is true, are nearsighted. Most of you are nearsighted. And because you're nearsighted, it's not because your eyes are weak, it's because your eyes are too strong, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a story we will tell on Friday, the truth about Piggy. Now today, we're gonna to talk about this idea of using lenses and mirrors to make images. And here's an example of that. Here's a little water droplet on a spider web in the morning, and you can see what's inside here is an image of some flowers which are far behind. That's the kind of thing we're going to be looking at today. And I want to start by thinking about mirror images. And, and here's something I, I have to tell you, and I'm, so, I'm sorry if I'm the first person to, to tell you this. This baby is looking in the mirror, and the baby's basically playing with the mirror baby. Okay, baby's like looking into here and seeing like, oh, hey, there's a whole other baby in there. I'm going to go ahead and play with this one. When we were uh, <laughs> first when we first got a dog, we had a, a dog who would like to play with the mirror puppy and she would sleep with the mirror puppy. Um, here's the thing though, this is not another baby back here. This is an image of this baby right here. It's the same one. And, and if I have just like spoiled things for you and you realize now that that person who greets you first thing in the morning isn't like a, a different person, it's, it's actually just an image of you. Crazy, crazy. I'm sorry if I've destroyed that idea for you. But it works like this. If rays of light hit a mirror, okay, and so here's a mirror right here in the center, and I'm going to have rays of light from an object, and we always use a tree. Historically, people would use just a little arrow, but we use a tree because, like, we're trying to, I don't know, have more bio content, which is kind of ridiculous. Anyway, here, here's, our, here's our object right here, and the point is it's got special points on it, which we're going to recognize and then it's got a clear directionality to it so here's my object and rays of light come from the object and the rays of light go in all different directions but the rays of light when they hit the mirror they bounce off it and they bounce off it at exactly the same angle that they came in at that's the law of reflection if you take those rays and trace them back and see where do they appear to come from they appear to come from a point behind the mirror and here's the thing when you look at something with your eye your eye you're basically locating the position uh, 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 positions of objects by tracing rays of light back and see where they appear to come from but if you look at these rays of light your your eye doesn't know from reflection and so it, the ray of light actually comes from the top of the tree it actually comes from here but when your eye traces it backwards it seems like it comes from here behind the mirror and so you're you look at that with your eye and you say like the tree's not here oh no the tree is back here that's the image that's the image that's where it the rays of light appear to come from and we're going to be interested in locating positions of image and this particular one is known as a virtual image and the reason for that we'll come back to later after we talk about real images now, real images are ones which you can actually like project in space and the kind of the default for this is like the hologram from the first Star Trek, etc. You can project the image into space. Well, you can actually do that with holograms, which is kind of awesome. But you can also project images with lenses into space and that's something we'll see as well. I want you to take a break right now and I want you to take a break and look at this key concept video and it's actually I was originally going to be about real images, but it's actually going to be about real images and virtual images. And I'll describe in some detail what's the difference between real images and virtual images and make this clear. And I actually also show some of the details of the distances and things like that. Take a, take a moment, pause this video, and take a look at this little 
key concept video, real images, virtual images. It'll be a kind of a good introduction to what comes next because it will help you make some of the stuff seem more real. And we've also got a blast from the past. My favorite real image is one um, in this little thing called the phantom light bulb. That's something which exists in the physics lecture demonstration room. And were I teaching class, I would roll this out into class and I would show it to you. But you don't have to wait for that. You can take a look at a video. And this is from the old Everyday Science show. And it's a much younger Brian showing some much younger students. Um, by the way, the students who are in the show are significantly older than you are right now. But it's from the Everyday Science show. And I want you to take a look at that. And you can see this is one particular real image. And it's a very, very cool one. And here's a little still from it to whet your appetite. Here's the image of a light bulb that's in space, but I can also project on a piece of paper. I've said too much already. Let's pause it. Take a look at that video. Now, I want to talk about lenses. And there's two different kinds of lenses, and we don't describe them by their shape. People often say we have convex and convex lenses. We do not use that. I don't use the expression convex. I don't use the expression concave. And the reason I don't do that is because um, it's much more useful to describe lenses and mirrors, not in terms of how they look, but in terms of what they do, okay? We're not just interested in appearances. Heavens to Betsy, we know that. So we're gonna look at converging and diverging lenses. And by converging, I mean this. If rays of light come into a converging lens, they are brought together. They're brought together at a focal point. And the distance from the lens to the focal point is the focal length for which we use the symbol F. And it's, we're going to use it as a positive number for a diverging lens. Now, for a, uh, for a, I'm sorry, for a converging lens. For a diverging lens, the exact opposite happened. Rays of light come in, and instead of being brought together, they're sent apart. They are diverged. But if you're out here, and this is your little eyeball here, your eyeball is looking towards these. If you trace the rays of light back and see where they appear to come from, they appear to come from a single point behind the lens. And we're going to call that the focal point of a diverging lens. Now, the rays of light don't actually come together there. In some sense, it's like a virtual focal point. We're going to still measure the focal length, but to kind of like capture the idea that there's something sick and wrong about this particular focal point, i.e. it's on the wrong side of the lens, the rays of light aren't converging on it. They seem to be diverging from it. We're going to use a negative number for the focal length. And in the math that we have, that will make everything work out just hunky-dory. Now, when we characterize lenses, like if you go to the, 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 the optometrist and you get a prescription, they give you a number. Like here's the number that characterizes the lens. Actually, they give you three. We'll talk about that later. But they give you numbers, and the numbers that they give you aren't the focal length of the lens. What they give you is the power, and the power is one over the focal length. But for this to be true, the focal length has to be in meters. That must be true. And the refractive power of a lens or the power of a mirror with a focal length f is 1 over f. That's the power, and it's in units of diopters. And since focal length is in meters, one diopter is going to be 1 meter to the minus 1 power. So two quick questions to test your understanding of this concept. What is the power of a converging lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters? And two, what is the power of a diverging lens with a focal length of negative 20 centimeters? And you look at this and you say, oh, negative 20 centimeters. That's right, because the focal point is on the wrong side of the lens. Anyway, I want you to take a minute, do a quick calculation. I'll be back. And of course, you did the quick calc. You can just do this in your head. If I have a focal length of 20 centimeters, that's 0.2 meters. And if I point to put 0.2 meters in here, I get the power is 5 diopters. And if it's a diverging lens with a focal length of negative 20 centimeters, I get a power of negative 5 diopters. And the negative is basically a signifier for it. Um, it tells us it's a diverging lens. The fact that there's no negative sign here. This is a positive number. That's a converging lens. By the way, negative 5 diopters, why did I pick that? That's basically the power of my prescription. I'm extremely nearsighted, as are many of you, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll come back and talk about that later. Now, I want you to do this. If you take two lenses and you put them next to each other, you just take the powers of the individual lenses, and that makes the total power of the combination. 
And that's not exactly true, but it's a pretty darn good approximation, good enough for everything that we're going to do, okay? So suppose I took a converging lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters, and I placed it next to a second lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters. Here's my question. What is the focal length of the combination of the two lenses? We know it will be shorter, because basically, Converging lens, focal length 10 centimeters, that's a certain amount of convergence. Second lens, that's a little bit more convergence. Convergence plus convergence equals even more convergence. And so we're going to have a shorter focal length, but what will it be? Take a minute, complete that calculation. I'll be back. Well, the power of the first lens is just equal to 1 over the focal length of the first lens, but the focal length of the first lens, it's, 20, it's 10 centimeters. But I need to put that in meters, that's 0.1 meters, and so the power is 10 diopters. The power of the second lens, that's 1 over f2. f2 is 0.2 meters, and so I end up with the power for the second lens of 20 diopters. What's the power of the com combination? I'm sorry, did I say 20 diopters? Brian, you little scamp. It's got a power of 5 diopters. 5 diopters. What's the power of the combination? It's 15 diopters, but we aren't asked for the power. We were asked for the focal length, and the focal length is going to be 1 over the power, 1 over 15 diopters, or 6.7 centimeters. And so it is shorter than the 10 centimeters or the 20 centimeters. So my assessment is that kind of makes sense. And I want you to make sure you are able to get that result for the calculation. Now I want to talk about using lenses to make real images. And a real image is something you can project in space. And if I take a converging lens and I put an object near it, but not too near it because it has to be farther away than the focal point. So here's the object, and the object is farther away from the lens than the focal point. Rays of light come from the object, and they go in all directions. And then the lens does to the things to them. And we're going to locate the position of the image, and we're going to do it by tracing three special rays. Now, it turns out you could use a ray tracing program, or you could use uh, compass and protractor, et cetera, et cetera. You could draw a gazillion rays, and all the rays of light that come from the object converge on the image. But let's just do three special rays. We want to locate the position of the object. And the position of the object is going to be on the other side of the lens. I drew one special ray here. It comes in parallel to the optical axis. And when it comes out, it goes through the focal point. And so it goes like this. Another special lens is one uh, ray is one that goes straight through the center of the mirror, and if a uh, lens. And if you go straight through the center of the lens, nothing happens. If a ray goes um, through the focal point and hits the, the lens, it comes out parallel to the optical axis. So you can see all the rays of light that left the, this point on the object converge at this point, and that's going to be the image. And if I put a screen right there, that image would be projected on a screen. Or if I put fog in the air, the image would be projected onto the fog. The image would appear right there. Now, whenever we do calculation, or whenever we do problems with images, I want you to first draw a picture like this. This is really important, and I know, I know, I sound like this broken record. I'm like, draw a picture, draw a picture, and you're like, wah, 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 whatever, Brian. Seriously, drawing the picture, mission critical, because it helps you wrap your mind around what's happening. If you just stick numbers in equations, you often end up <coughs> being led astray. So. You take those three rays, I locate the position of the image, and it's back here. And if I need to be more accurate, I can use some mathematical relationships, and the mathematical relationships are the ones that we have right here. If I say the distance from the object to the lens is s, the distance from the lens to the image is s prime, f is the focal length of the lens, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. Now you can see, if I switch s and s prime, they play the same role in the equation. So switching the image and the object would be the same. So if I put the object here, the image would form here. It's completely reversible. Another thing we're going to look at is the magnification. And the magnification is the ratio of the height of the object, which is h 
prime to the height of the, I'm sorry, let's back that up. The magnification is the height of the image and the height of the image is h prime divided by the height of the object which is h. So the magnification h prime over h and that makes sense. It's just the size of the image divided by the size of the object and that's equal to negative s prime over s. Now the negative sign what it tells us is that if I have a real image from a lens it's inverted. Whenever you get a negative sign in this section of the course it's a signifier and the signifier is it's a real image and it's inverted and so the image height here if you get a negative number for it the negative number doesn't say it's like negative height it's not like a hole it's upside down so the image is upside down real image and it's inverted now we're going to look at more cases of this I want to start by giving you a chance to, to do this so I want you to take a look at this problem a two centimeter tall object is 40 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a 20 centimeter focal length. First off, draw a picture, draw a ray diagram that shows the image location, the image orientation, and the height. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you get started. First thing you would do is you draw an optical axis. Okay, so here's my optical axis like so. And then I draw a lens and I'm gonna draw, it's a converging lens, so I'm gonna draw it with a shape like so. And I'm gonna put the focal point on here. I got a focal point here and I got a focal point here and I have focal points on both sides of the lens and they're um, the same distance from the lens. Lenses basically work the same forwards and backwards. If you take your glasses and you put them on backwards they still work pretty well. Your astigmatism will be screwed up but your myopia will still be treated. Anyway, I got a two centimeter tall object so I'm going to take that and put it back here and it's 40 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a 20 centimeter focal length so this is 0.2 meters the object you know what scratch that I'm not going to say it's 0.2 meters it turns out the equations with, with, that we use are going to have only distances in them and as long as all of our distances are in the same units everything is copacetic so we're going to say the object is 20 centimeters, or the uh, focal point is 20 centimeters from the lens. The object is 40 centimeters from the lens, and I've tried to draw my picture so that that's more or less matching. And I have to locate the position of the image. So set up something like this. Then draw the three special rays and see where they end up. So I want you to set that up for yourself, draw the rays, see where the image is, I'll be back. And now let's go ahead and draw our three special rays. And if we do that, I get a ray that comes out parallel to the optical axis, hits the lens, and then goes through the focal point. So it goes like this. My second special ray is one that goes straight through the center of the lens with no deflection. So it goes like this. My third special ray is one that goes through the focal point, hits the lens, and then emerges parallel to the optical axis. And you can see my three rays have more or less come together right here, and so my image is going to be right there because I've located the tip of the image. So my object is here, my image is right here. And I can see what I'm expecting to get as I'm expecting to get an image that's inverted and just looking at this, it looks like S prime is approximately equal to S. The distance of the image from the lens is approximately equal to the distance of the object from the lens. So I'm expecting that to be 40 centimeters-ish, okay? Now I wanna do, what I wanna do next is actually do the numbers. So, 20 centimeter tall object is 40 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a 20 centimeter focal length. Calculate the image position and height. I want you to use the relationships and do a calculation and see if that matches more or less what you saw. Okay, you're just pausing the video, or maybe not even pausing the video and not doing the calculation. You scamp, stop watching this video, pick up a pencil and paper and do that calculation. I'll be back. 
All right, now remember our basic relationships. We have one over s plus one over s prime is equal to one over f, and the magnification is this. And we can use that to determine the height. So for our first piece, we're supposed to calculate image position and height. Well, the image position is one over s prime. One over s prime is equal to one over f minus one over s. And since everything that's in that equation is a distance, I can just keep my distances in centimeters. One over the focal length, which is 20 centimeters, so one over 20 centimeters, plus one over, oh sorry, minus one over 40 centimeters. Oh my goodness, I dropped a negative sign. One over 40 centimeters, I have one over 20 minus one over 40, and what I end up getting is one over S prime is equal to one over 40 centimeters, so S prime is equal to 40 centimeters. That was about what we predicted. Now let's look at the magnification. The magnification is equal to negative s prime over s. So it's equal to negative 40 over 40, negative 1. What that tells us is the image is about the same height as the object and the negative sign tells us it's inverted. And that is about exactly what we saw. So we see that we have an object which is inverted, I'm sorry, an image which is inverted, and it's about the same size as the object. If I went ahead and used that calculation and came up with the height, I would get height h prime is equal to negative two. But I don't say the image is negative two centimeters high. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Um, it, the negative sign just tells us it's inverted. So I would say it's two centimeters high and the negative sign says it's inverted. It's like when you stand on your head, you don't say, oh, all of a sudden you're negative five and a half feet high. We would say, you're five and a half feet high, you're just standing on your head. It's always the case that the negative signs that we use, there's a, they're a signifier, okay? When the sign comes out and it's negative, it tells you something. If a lens has a negative focal length, it tells you it's a diverging lens. If an image height comes out to be, uh, if your H prime comes out to be negative, it tells you it's inverted, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to take a look at synthesis 18.1. I want you to go back and take a look at the textbook and see what the sign conventions are. What is the negative sign telling us? Speak, negative sign, what are you trying to tell us? Oh, it's all in synthesis 18.1. Now, I wanna talk about your eyeball for a second. We're gonna come back and talk about this later. If you have an object that you're looking at, the image appears on your retina and it's inverted. Oh, by the way, and I have an amazing demonstration to show this. And if you ever get to see me in person on campus again, say, Brian, show us that cool demonstration that shows us the image on your retina is in fact inverted. Um, and I will happily do that, have a cool demonstration of it. But anyway, the images are, are inverted, they're on the retina, and they're real images because the image comes to a focus here and it's picked up by rod and cone cells in your retina and that's how we see. Now, in your eye, the distance S prime, that's the distance that the screen is from the lens, okay? That's your distance S prime. It's fixed. It's about 1.7 centimeters. And actually, we're going to assume that it's always that. And it turns out with the calculations that we do, the exact value doesn't matter. But it's about this. It's about this. That's my S prime. S is the distance of the lens of your eye to an object that you're seeing. Now I want to do a quick calculation. So my laptop, when I got it, it said it had a retina display. And what does that mean? I mean, what do they mean it has a retina display? And we're going to do a quick calculation to, to show this. So my laptop's display has 100 pixels per centimeters. Each pixel, therefore, is this much wide. It's one one hundredth of a centimeter or 0 0.0001 meters wide. And when I'm working on my laptop, I'm reading with my screen 48 centimeters away from my eyes. Why do I do that? Oh, I have special laptop glasses. I'll talk about this later. I have special computer glasses. And so I know for a fact how far away I sit from my screen. I measured it and I gave that number to my optometrist. And it turns out he gave me glasses that are specially calibrated. So if something is 48 centimeters away from my eyes, they are exactly in focus without my eyes doing a doggone thing. So we'll talk about that. If we assume my retina is 0.017 meters from my 
the lens of my eye. Here's my question. What is the size on my retina of the image of a single pixel? Okay. I want you to think about that and think about how you would solve that. And I'll be back. Now, of course, you, uh, you know, have, having absorbed the lessons of this class so far, said, oh, Brian, well, of course, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. And the picture is going to look like this. I have some sort of a pixel on my laptop screen, and there's going to be an image of the pixel on the retina. And the distance of the pixel from my eye is S. The distance of the lens in my eye from the image on the retina is S prime. The height of the pixel is H. The height of the image of the pixel is H prime. We draw that picture and that just helps us wrap our mind around what we're looking at. You always say, I don't know what to use for what number in the equations. Drawing the picture really helps it out. And this is the height of the image. I'm sorry, height of the object, that's the pixel. Back here on the retina, that's the image of the pixel. Okay, that's what we need to do. And having drawn a picture, we can go forward and do a calculation. Now, let's think about this. I have a couple of basic, basic relationships. I have this one, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. Well, that's a cool relationship. I love it as much as anybody. Probably, I probably like it more than most people. But that's not useful because the, we already, s and s prime are already given. Um, and that could calculate the focal length of the eye, but that's not what we need to know. That's something we will calculate later, so don't worry. We're going to come back and take a look at that. But let's think about our magnification equation. And the magnification equation was h prime over h, the height of the image over the height of the object, and that was equal to negative s prime over s. That relationship seems kind of compelling, but I want to think about this. There's a negative sign, and the negative sign, as always, is just a signifier. That just says the image is upside down. We know that that's true, so get rid of that bad boy. Okay, we're not going to use that. I'm just going to say mathematically, if I'm just concerned about magnitudes, h prime over h is equal to s prime over s, and what I'm looking for is h prime, the height of a single pixel. Well, that's just equal to h times s prime over s. I know h. I know S prime and I know S and I have all the tools that I need to calculate what H prime is. And if I do that, I get a value of H prime is 3.5 microns. And here's why it's called a retina display. If you look at my retina, the size of individual rod and cone cells is about 2.5 microns. So if the image is 3.5 microns, that's just barely bigger than the size of a cone cell. But more importantly, remember what we talked about last week, the light that comes into my eye goes through a circular aperture, i.e. my pupil. And so as a consequence, there's a diffraction spot on the retina. When I'm looking at something that's a point object, the size of the diffraction spot is six millimeters. And the diffraction spot is bigger than the image size of 3.5 microns. So there is no point in making a laptop screen with the pixels packed more densely because my eyes are not good enough to be able to, to, to do better. The limitation on the crispness of my laptop screen is not a limitation of the screen. It is a limitation of my eyeballs. The fault is not in our stars, it is in us. Oh, heavens to Betsy. So it's a retina screen. It's as good as it needs to be, which is great. Now, I want to talk about virtual images. Okay, virtual images. When you see a virtual image, you must look through the lens. The image is not projected into space. The image is sort of like where you perceive it to be. So here's the way it works. Here is a diverging, uh, converging lens right here, okay? And I have an object near the converging lens, and it's this thing right here, it's a little arrow. I don't know why we aren't doing a tree, because we usually do a tree, but anyway, it's an arrow. Um, rays of light come from the object, and they get converged, but they can't get converged to a focus because the object is too darn close to the lens, it's closer than the focal point. So they get diverged, they, I'm sorry, they get converged, they're less diverging than they were. And so as a consequence, your eye will perceive the location of the image different than the image, than the position of the object. So ray of light comes in, gets bent, goes towards the eye. 
and I get a bunch of them, your eye traces it backward. Where do they appear to come from? Where do they appear to come from is back there. So I have the object and I have the image. But to be able to see the image, the person is looking through the lens. Look where the rays of light are coming from. They are coming from behind the lens. So you have to look through the lens to see a virtual image. So here's a question. Two centimeter tall object, it's 20 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a 40 centimeter focal length. Draw a ray diagram that shows the image location, the orientation, and the height. Okay, so I want you to do this, and, and you're going to be looking through the lens as we saw before. You're going to do a ray diagram for this. I'm going to get you started. Here's my optical axis. Here's my lens right here, and the lens has a certain focal length it's 40 centimeters so I've got a focal point back here that's 40 centimeters from the lens I'm not going to bother to draw the other okay that's 40 centimeters your eyeball is over here you're looking from over here looking from over here and I'm going to have an object on the back side of the lens here's my object right here and it's 20 centimeters from the converging lens and you're looking through the lens at the object. What I want you to do is I want you to draw the special rays and see where will the image be, what's its location, what's its orientation, what's its height. Oh, you think I was pausing just for my health? No, I'm pausing so that you folks can take a piece of paper and some pencils and make that diagram. So go ahead and pause what you're doing. Go ahead and do that little diagram. I'll be back. Well, let's just draw a couple of special rays. First off, I can always have a ray that goes straight through the center of a lens and is not deflected. And then I can also have a ray that comes in parallel to the optical axis. And if it comes in parallel to the optical axis, it will go through the focal point. And I'm going to draw the focal point over here on the front side lens. I forgot to do that one before. Ray of light is going to go through the focal point like so. But then your brain is going to trace those rays of light back and see where they appear to come from. Where they appear to come from. Is right about here. So it looks to me like my object is going to appear to be about 40 centimeters from the lens. And it looks like it's going to be about twice as high as the object. I want you to think about how I drew those rays because you're going to want to do ray diagrams like that. And we draw, and, and drawing the ray diagram helps us kind of like wrap our mind around what the question is asking. We're suggesting that the image location is about 40 centimeters from the lens and it's going to be about twice as big as the object. Now let's do a calculation. Next piece is doing the numbers, doing the numbers. And so we want to do a calculation for this particular case. Where does the image appear to be? How tall is it? And we'll use the basic relationships that we've used previously. And let's start with this first one. 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. And I'm solving for the image position. So I'm going to solve 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over s. But here's the thing. 1 over f is now 1 over 40. 1 over s prime is 1 over 20. And if I to use my fractions that I learned back in elementary school to figure out what that is. Of course, 1 20th is basically 2 40th. We know that that's true. And so I can do a quick calculation and I can see, ooh, sorry, I went too far with that reversing. Um, I'm going to get negative 1 over 40. And what that tells me is s prime is equal to negative 40. And the negative 40 the negative sign is a signifier and what it says is that the image is on the same side of the lens as the object so it's different from the case of the real image that we looked at previously. That's what the negative sign is telling us but we also use the negative sign in our calculation for magnification h prime over h is equal to negative s prime over s if I rewrite that to calculate for the image height h prime is equal to h times negative s prime over s. Well, if I put in my values, I know what s prime is. It's negative 40. I know what s is. Okay, s is 20 centimeters. 
and h, the image, the, I'm sorry, the object height is 2.0 centimeters. So what I get if I put in that negative 40 for s prime, 20 for s, 2 for h, I get h prime is equal to positive 4.0 centimeters. And you wouldn't say it's positive 4 centimeters high, you would say it's 4 centimeters high, but the positive sign tells you that it is upright, and that is in fact what we saw in our ray diagram. So we would say the image is 40 centimeters from the lens and it is 4 centimeters high, and if we asked about this, it is upright. Now I want to talk briefly about diverging lenses, and this is a pair. Uh, this is a diverging lens in a pair of eyeglasses. Oh, by the way, your eyeglasses have diverging lenses in them too. But that's a point we'll come back and talk about later. And if we're locating rays from a diverging, uh, doing doing a ray diagram with diverging lens, there are a couple different sets of rays that we can do. If you have rays of light that come in parallel they diverge, but if I trace them backwards, they appear to come from the focal point. If I take rays of light that are diverging as if they're gonna go towards the focal point, they emerge parallel, and you can always have rays of light that go through the center of the lens that nothing happens to at all. So I want you to do this. A student looks at a two centimeter high object through a diverging lens of focal length negative 10 centimeters. The object is 20 centimeters from the lens. Draw a ray diagram that shows the image location, the orientation, and the height. I want you to start with the drawing, and the point of the drawing is to help you figure out where the image is, figure out how the system works, help you assess your calculation. You just need to wrap your mind around what the heck is going on. So go ahead and draw a diagram. I'll be back. And I really want you to draw a diagram, so I want you to pause, but to give you a head start, I'm going to give you some advice about how to do the drawing. And here's what you start with. Draw the optical axis, draw the lens, mark the focal points, locate the object, draw special rays, note the position of the image. Go ahead and work this out on your own. I'll be back. So I draw the optical axis. I draw the lens, I draw the lens here, here's my lens, I'm going to draw it so it's like diverging lens shaped. I'm going to draw the focal length, and the focal length is negative 10 centimeters, negative just means it's diverging, okay, I'll draw it on both sides. The object is 20 centimeters from the lens, so it's right here, I have to find the image. So I'm going to draw the special rays, and there's a couple of special rays that I'm going to draw. First off, ray of light comes in parallel to the optical axis. When it hits the lens, it diverges, and it diverges so that it's going to appear to be coming from the focal point, so it diverges like that. The second ray I'm going to draw is a ray that just goes straight through the center of the lens with no deflection. Okay. Then your eyeball, and I'm going to put your eyeball over here, you trace the rays of light back and see where they appear to come from, and where they appear to come from is right here. And so my object, my image, is going to be a little itty bitty image and it's closer to the lens than the focal point, okay? And so we're expecting, I don't know, if I had to guess, I would say like this is, I don't know, seven centimeters or so. So I'm going to say S prime is approximately seven centimeters and it's going to be upright and it's going to be small. That's what I'm expecting. Let's do the calculations. So we're going to start by remembering the equations that we use. There are these equations right here. And we have a two centimeter high object and, it's, tw and uh, it's 20 centimeters from the lens. The lens has a focal length of 20 centimeters. I'm gonna use my basic relationship. I'm solving for S prime. So one over S prime is equal to one over F minus one over S. Well, the focal length in this case is negative. So it's one, negative one over 10 minus 1 over 20, and again I can use my fractions, that's just going to be 3 twentieths negative, so I get S prime is equal to negative 6.7 centimeters. Oh heavens to Betsy, I guessed it was about 7. Victory! This seems really, really good. S prime is negative 6.7. The negative sign is a signifier. It tells me that the image is on the same side of the lens as the object. It's different than the case of the real image. And let's calculate magnification because we want to figure out how large the image is. H prime is equal to H 
times negative s prime over s. Well, s prime is negative, s is positive, h is positive. And so I end up getting a height of about 0.67 centimeters. So I get an uh, image that's about a third the height of the object and it's closer to the lens than the object was and it's on the same side of the lens as the object was which is what the negative sign tells me h prime is positive and so that tells me it's upright and in fact that's exactly what we saw in our original diagram our numbers kind of like match up with that so I would say it's 6.7 centimeters from the lens it's 0.67 centimeters high and it is in fact upright but again to be able to see this virtual image you have to be looking through the lens as we saw that's the way we do ray diagrams to find images from lenses I want you to do some calculations like that. You've got some examples on the homework assignment, but we're also going to use it to apply it to all kinds of optical instruments. Before we do that, we're going to do another class where we talk about lenses and images, and we're going to talk about mirrors. And I used a mirror to make this picture right here. And how would you do such a thing? Oh, we'll talk. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk with you soon.